Hi, I'm Donna Dewberry, the original creator of the One Stroke Painting Technique. I'm in Plaid Studio today and I'm just so excited. We're doing Flowers of the Month and the July flower is a Larkspur. We're using multi-surface folk art paint and it's got luscious colors. You're gonna love the creaminess of it. And we get to paint this canvas, which is gonna have some new technique in it. I'm gonna be doing a glass vase that actually has stems in it that look like they're in the glass vase. We're gonna do a creamy, beautiful, romantic looking background and I'm gonna paint a dragonfly with you. So when you're doing larkspurs, I want you to think about this because larkspurs, depending on the color, mean different meanings. So when we're doing a purple blue larkspur, it means first love. And I love what we're painting, so hopefully you'll feel the same way as I do as we take this project to the canvas and we're gonna go, let's paint right now. Okay, so to start our Larkspur painting, we've got a 12 by 12 canvas. We're gonna work on the background. And the background has lots of yummy different shades uh, muddled in with the white. And I think that gives it a nice illusion, like maybe it's a glare on the glass or whatever be in the window. And then we have the table and we're addressing the see-through vase. So those are fun elements. So let's get started with that. So I'm gonna put this over here so you can see it as we go here. And I have put out um, four colors here. So these are the little teeny touches of color that I'm using. So this is citrus green, cobalt U, and magenta with wicker white. And these are our folk art multi-surface paints, which are gonna be wonderful. As soon as we get this background and it dries slightly, it is got a, like a sealer in it and you're gonna love the finish. All right, so I'm using my man-made faux sea sponge and I put just a little bit of water on it, just a little bit. Do not put it in the water and squeeze it out. And in fact, if it's got water in it, what you wanna do is squeeze it and get the water out into your paper towel and it'll make it work better for you because if you have too much water, it's gonna um, puddle up on you and make it more muddy. So also, we don't use medium when we're working with these colors. Now, I'm gonna start by picking up white usually, all right? And I'm gonna, let's start with a teeny bit of the citrus green. So I'm gonna go like this and rub it in, all right? So as I'm coming around, I'm gonna lightly, little bit of pressure you could decide how much pressure to give it depending on the look we want. And then I could tap it some, all right? So I'm gonna come over here. And I don't want it to look like patchwork quilts. I want it to blend into everything that I'm doing. I did put some back here. All right. And a little bit in here, we'll see later. All right, that's where the table area is. Now, I can go right in, I'm gonna tap some of this off, get some white, and pick up a teeny bit of blue. Okay, so next, we're gonna tap in a little bit of blue. Now, I think I'm gonna like better the circle, circular motion because more than texture back here. All right, a little bit of blue in here. Gotta be careful that that citrus on there doesn't turn the blue uh, a not so happy color. And also wrap this on your edges as you come around so that you don't have to frame this. We framed ours, but you shouldn't have to if you decide not to with a wrap canvas. It can hang right on the wall. All right. All right, so I'm gonna switch ends so that my pink doesn't have blues in it. Or you can, I like even have two sponges going here. Or 
can go wash it. But then you have to dry it, remember that. Okay, so I want to rub some pink in here. All right, a little bit around where this face is going to go. And a little bit over here. So real soft pastel, you can tap it out to blend it more. I can bring a little bit of white in here and blend the white into it so you don't see from color to color a big difference. So it just gradually goes in, okay? I did come back with some colors later around the vase. All right, so let's look at this table down here. I'm gonna take, my chalk's not gonna show very well, so I'm gonna use my pencil. And I have about, let's see, about three fingers. So if I come this way and put three fingers and then make a mark here, all right, so if I run this little finger on the edge, it can give me a good table. And it'll give me a nice line. All right? And always pull it down this way towards you because what happens is if you do it side to side, you tend to curve it. And when you pull it down like this, you can get a better line. All right, so I'm going to put a teeny bit of green with this blue that was left on here. I want you to see that I'm going to push my finger on this piece of the sponge and then pull it down that line. And then I can work this in. You decide the color. You can have some of all those colors that are on the sponge. All right, so that's pretty simple, right? Now, let's look at the vase. Now, I put that vase four fingers from the outside edge. So that's the curve, all right? So if this is the other way you're gonna look at it, you're gonna gauge by fingers if you have something to look at and, it's, and you're at full size. But if you don't, then what you have to do is I divide my canvas into quarters and I decide in this quarter right here how much of the whole space here is this. So if I divide that in half again, it's one fourth of the um, square, this quarter of the square. So now if we're over in this side of the square and you're looking at this, this vase is about the top of halfway. And if you're looking at this, look at that. It's about halfway, halfway right there. So that, that's another way you can look at it, okay? So I came in here, but to do that, look, I would have to come here and get my halfway line and come here and put a halfway line to help me gauge that, all right? So this is a piece of the vase. It's not the whole entire vase. So I also came down into my table a little bit, okay? So I want to curve here so the vase looks round. A little bit of a lip on this base. It also needs to be curved. All right, and then I can start coming out here a little bit. Okay, so be careful when you're sketching not to draw it really heavy. All right, so now the fun thing is learning how to do a clear vase, and it's so easy, but people don't realize that. So I've put out some floating medium. I'm using my three-quarter flat brush. I'm gonna dip it into water, lay it on the paper towel to get out the excess water, and then I'm going to work floating medium into my brush. But guess what? We need more white, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and put a clear plate here with some white, because we only need a teeny bit, but I, I, look at this. I don't have a place to get here and side load, all right? So I can use my medium here and come right here and pick up. Now I want you to see that I'm working this in here where you can't see the difference on the white, but look at that. So it's just gonna give you a nice white edge. And this time I want it to go across the brush bristles, all right? Because what's gonna happen is that this right here, now see I can scrub this a little bit to make that lead go away. It's gonna give it a gray tone, all right? So let's get some more white. 
I'm going to grab medium, work it in, and this is what's going to happen. Right along here is just for you to see, um, to see the line. We're going to intensify this after we paint our stems inside, okay? So sometimes if you're doing a, a blue glass or a green glass or something, that's going to stand out a little bit more than pure white. But I have to tell you what looks wonderful about this is when you put the stems in and then we put the glaze back over the stems. See how that is? All right, so to do a double one here, the double ridge here for the vase, I'm going to come down here and do the first ridge right there. And then I don't want to go over, I don't want to do this one and then go over it. So it makes sense that you do that one first. Get more strong white there. And mo I have to tell you, when people float, guess what? They tend to be wimpy. I don't want you to be wimpy. I want you to have strong color, okay? So there we go. Now that's all you have to do. And then we're going to put our stems into that. How fun is that? I can also come in here. I think I went over a little bit too much. And look, you can just clean it up really little uh, with a little bit there. All right, so let's get started. What I want to share with you now is that later I'm going to come in with my magenta, which is how I got the light pink. And I shade it in here by floating just along here to get more intense color here. But all of that happens after this is all dry. All right, so heavier here to get more shading and um, I think that's about all the floating I did on this one. More on the vase, all right? So citrus green, the cobalt with the white, and the magenta is how we got that wonderful soft background, all right? And everybody's background's going to look different. You decide how you want to, how blended you want it to be, all right? So I want to go now while that dries for a few minutes, and let's work on your worksheet. So I have the worksheet. I'm moving all this out of the way for us. I have the worksheet so we can go practice, and this is going to sit up here and dry. All right, so let's address this. I'm going to put my palette down so I can work with you guys here. All right. Now, on my worksheet, this is the flower of the month for July. So you're going to have all your 12 months to work with if you are working with your kid and your worksheets. And to learn the larkspur, we're going to use white, cobalt U, Prussian blue, sap green, and citrus green. And it shows you each brush that we're going to use. It also gives you the inspiration of what this flower means, which I thought that was kind of fun. Now, the painting we're going to do isn't going to have these really full blossoms at the bottom because it's in the distance. This is really close to you. So if you're doing a one stem, which I have done on some of these projects over here, then I would do more of my flowers, um, this finished flower right in the bottom of it. But these are mostly, um, some of these that I'm doing today are mostly the small little petite uh, blossoms because of where it is in the vase. And then we're going to have the green stems go in. So I'm going to start on this with our green stems because we want them in the vase. Then we want to glaze the vase after we do the green stems. And so I'm going to practice this. Then we're going to paint the stems on. Then we're going to come back while the stems dry for a few minutes and start doing our blossoms, all right? So we do also want the... Um, the vase to go in before we do the large leaves too, guys, because they we want the glaze to be underneath those. All right, we even have a dragonfly in this one, so that'll be really fun. All right, so the th first thing I want you to see is that we're going to take our brush. I've used a six in some of this, and I'm picking up a 10 here too, just to get the stems into the water. And I want you to see which colors we're using in my double loader here. I'm I've got the sap green next to the citrus green so that we can load in between and the cobalt you with the wicker white for the blossoms. So see, I'm picking up and then I'm working it in. All right. Pick up, work in. Now the smaller brushes, guys, you can load those two different ways. You can load it all with citrus, work that in and side load by dipping a teeny bit of the sap, all right? That's from a size 12 and smaller. Just remember, the loading's easier sometimes 
if you put the main color, which is citrus, in there. All right. Now what we're doing is we're going to come up with this stem. All right. And then we're going to start coming off of this. Now what I did on most of these is I pulled it down, the down movement, and then I'm coming up on some of them. All right, so we're right on the chisel of the brush. We're slightly li lifting the first color, which would be the light green. And then when we do that, we can get a really skinny little tip. Same thing here. What I'm doing here is putting some of those stems underneath. And you know what? You might not see a lot of them, but I just want you to see um, that that's going to be your map to lay out your blossoms. So even if they don't all show, we can come in later and put a few little leaves so they will show. Now, I'd like to show you that I've made the blend for us to start doing the leaf and see if I load it properly in my palette. It's all the shades all there. It's all blended for me. So I'm going to pick up this. Um, I'm going to flatten my brush in that paint right there again. And this is what's going to happen. You can come up to there. Now reverse our bristles and come down. But if that's feeling uncomfortable for you, you can go up one side and go up the other side. So whatever ends up being comfortable, but this is what I'm going to show you, is that as I'm doing the sleeve, I'm going to go up, down, up, down, and then slide to the tip. All right, now we make ourselves a little eraser, folded paper that's, I mean, probably paper towel that's slightly dampened on one corner and because this paint's made with a sealer in it the multi-surface paint you want to wipe as you go because it's made to stay on glass and metal and different surfaces so if you don't wipe it off right away that's going to be a little hard to scrub it off okay so that in that few minutes got a little hard there all right so let's do this again I want you to go slow the first time and turn. You're allowed to turn these, okay, till your arm, and if you're lefty, it's you might start on this side over there. Now, so if I follow this, it also, it's like you got the teacher at home with you because what you're going to do is stay within my shape here, all right? And when I'm wiggling, so you could tell when I'm wiggling, that's when you would wiggle. So if you go slow first, there's a wiggle, there's a smooth, then there's coming back. Now, this always looks better when you do it quicker, okay? But when you're starting, I want you to feel the movement. Same thing with these little one-stroke leaves. We just get a smaller brush, and we're ready to go. All right, so let's go and add some stems and all into our vase. And I'm going to grab our canvas, and let's get started, all right? So, right here, I'm just dry enough that I can put my stems in. So I'm going to pick up more paint, ready to go. And remember, I have the 10 flat because I want these stems to look like they're at an angle in here. And some of them can touch all the way at the bottom, but um, the flower is so full at the top, it might hold the stems up where they wouldn't touch. So I'm going to get at an angle, and then I'm going to come up okay now we have some greenery that comes all the way down on here I'm going to get a teeny bit of medium and I'm going to come right up here now think about them being naturally in to the vase okay now what's going to happen is when I'm working on this one I'm going to decide also there's two ways to do this you can decide by coming everything off the bottom. Or if I knew this one's gonna be right here, I might start right up there. Now this one, I, I'm gonna show you I would want to come the other way. So because this is varnished already with a sealer inside, I could just take that off. It's a little stronger green though. All right, I don't wanna rub it too much because it's not totally dry. All right, so I'm gonna come over here instead and then I can bring it to that stem, okay? 
So then this one right here, I only had three coming up because they're pretty full flowers, all right? I still had a few more stems in here than three because I'm going to say that I'm putting some greenery in here and I need a few stems for that, all right? So you don't have to go crazy with it, but just have some in here in different places. Okay, so that's got to totally dry before I put the glaze over it. So I can also, let's put a few stems down here that are laying down and decide. So remember again, I like to come to the tip and it helps me decide where I want it. So as it's laying down, the blossom's laying on top of the second one. So this one's laying down, all right? And this one would be on top and, and this blossom's gonna hold that up in the air. Does that make sense? All right, now I'm gonna touch a little bit of white, work this in, and when I'm right here, I'm going to push down and put that over and put this over, I mean under, all right? So, all right, so let's go practice the blue and I really need to screen the dry. Now, I usually have a blow, uh, hair dryer to get those really dry for me because I do not, I cannot touch the vase until those green stems are dry. Okay, so I want to add some of the Prussian blue to get some of the depth, and you will see I put it on my dragonfly and some of my shading also. So let's add just a little bit of that. It's got a rich, deep color, and that sometimes gives you a better uh, depth as you're painting. So while that's drying, let's go load this brush. So I am still using my um, tin on this, and uh, on here I even use some 12, but I'm gonna go from a six to a 10 as I'm working. So I can dip a little bit of the Prussian blue in the cobalt blue edge, and I can work this in. Okay, so I get here, dip the Prussian blue, and work it in. All right, so to see if I've got this like I want it to be, I can go right there and see how the color is. And see, I need a little bit more Prussian blue to get that color that I used. So then I can lay it here and see. See that? Okay, so now we're going to try some of these little, little teeny top blossoms that haven't opened yet. And then we can come here and push down a little harder and stand up. And see, it automatically blends shades and highlights for you. So, and we come back and I just pick up little bits of white. Same thing over here that I'm gonna go up and over, all right? And then I might get a stronger little bit of white. And when I come over here, I'm flattening it, all right? So here's the white here. And then I did a little bit of a ruffle just to get some of those blossoms and more white, same thing here. This time I wiggle a little bit. I slide, I wiggle, and I slide, all right? So as we're working here, looking at this one, we went up and over. So you're following my arrows, the starting points, as, as you make the full flower, which we're not going to on here, you would follow the steps by number, one, two, three, four, five. And that's how it lays out easier as you're stroking. So right here, I want you to see that as I pick up, I'm gonna start here and come across and start here and come across. All right, look how easy that makes that. All right, now what do we have to do? We've gotta come over here and wipe this off. So I'm gonna get one of my paper towels ready and it's going to be my eraser since I used up my other. Now I put just a corner of water. So see, then it wipes it off really easy. And you lay the dry paper towel and finish it off. So if you keep that up as you go, I try to always remind you to do that. Also, a little bit later, I put a little bit more Prussian blue with teeny bits of green. A little bit of green. And I could do a little bit of bright green. All right, and I'm just gonna show you how this happens. When we're doing the dragonfly a little bit later, it'll be sliding and then laying it down and slide back. 
So slide, get the point, lay it down, and come back. And just work with the shape that you want, because there's a lot of different shapes. Now look, I can push and slide, push and slide as we're doing um, the blue. And then we're just going to come in with a very small brush. I'll show you as I'm stroking the dragonfly body. But this being up close and actual size, like, my, like I'm right there stroking it with you, then that's going to help you feel comfortable about doing the strokes and what size they would be. This is actually the size I'm going to put on my piece. All right. So let's put that up front. And I want you to remind yourself by seeing it right in front of you. All right, so after you practice, you and then you start painting, you're like, did I, am I still doing it right? And that's going to help you see that. All right, so I'm going to go back. Let's clean that brush. And I'm going to pick up my plates where I was floating again, OK? So now what happens with the white, now that this is dry, make sure it's dry. Um, I'm going to take my 3 quarter again, and it was already a little DM. All right, I got my medium. And let's get some strong white again. Now, I want a little bit stronger this time, but I still have good glaze on there, all right? So now I'm going to come right on top again, a little bit more. Now, I did put a heavier citrus behind the one I actually painted before. So you can re remember that as you go to how much is the white going to show. All right, so see, I'm putting the glaze over all the stems now. All right, so you still want to see through, but you want to see the stems that are in there. All right, so now I'm going to take a little bit of chisel across. And I sometimes just come across here like a glare. All right, so I could have done a little bit lighter on the stems themselves, or I can chisel and bring a real strong glare. It's got too much paint, where it comes down. And it's all about the sunlight hitting this, all right? And a stronger white, all right? And you can have a little glare right on there. So when that's all done, you'll be surprised how good that looks, because it's going to actually look like the vase with this highlight on it. OK. I have a little bit of ridge there I don't like. So I'm going to take it off. <laughs> All right, so sometimes that glare would be a color, too. All right. So now we're ready. Now, what we're going to do is work on our leaves and a few of the little stems that are going to hold the blossoms, all right? So I'm cleaning my brushes as, as I go so that they aren't drying with paint in them, all right? So I'm still going to put this little guy right in front of us, remembering to follow our, our greenery, all right? Now I'm going to come right here and get these two colors and I'm moving up to a 12, all right? So we have a 12 flat. These one-stroke brushes you're going to love because they have enough bristles to do exactly the technique I want to show you, all right? So I can, every once in a while, pick a teeny bit of white up and then work that in there, too, to give it a little bit of light. All right, so I decided the first leaf, this is that leaf we were doing over there where we came out a little bit and in, out and in. All right, and I can do the second half. All right, now I'm coming around here and curving the stem so it looks like it's coming outside of the, uh, the stem into that leaf. OK, so now let's come over here and right in here, I want this one to really stand out and be outside of the vase, not laying on the vase. So you see that bright green? Now that is going to make it just, I just flipped the brush for the other color. Now see how I turned the canvas? It's OK. 
So many of you think that you can't move it, but if you see me do it, you feel comfortable. Now see, I didn't push hard enough to fill that metal in, so I could go right back over it and make that look like I want it to look and pull the stem right in the middle, okay? So there's two guys, two big leaves, and the rest of the leaves are a small brush. And I always tell people, small brushes make you feel good because you don't see every little detail. Sometimes that's good, sometimes it's not, but in this case it would be. Now I'm showing you that I'm pulling these stems. Usually I take and go up, so it's a little teeny stem, but these are going to have blossoms on them. Now see how I'm laying this out, slightly getting larger as we come back. And they're like your road map, so you know where that blossom's going to go. All right. There we go. Now does that make sense? If all the blossoms were good, gone, that's what you would see. And up here at the top, Sometimes I have a little bright green, or even, let's put a little bit of white so you see what I mean. So I can have a little couple of green before I start the blossoms, all right? I didn't necessarily do that this time, but I have many times. All right. It's it tricky when they're overlapping each other for you to know what to do next. All right, now I'm a little heavy on this, but when we put our little blossoms, I can cover some of the green. There we go. I hope you're enjoying these strokes and learning how to make painting flowers easy for you. And with a one stroke technique, doing all these little strokes um, one by one and how I build it makes it easy for you to achieve it yourself right there at home. My little finger is steady in me so that as I'm doing these strokes um, I, I'm not out here just trying to figure out how hard to push. All right. Okay, little teeny. Like I said, you might not see much of this but it's good for the base, the foundation. All right, so let's start with a smaller brush. I'm gonna leave this one here, and we, let's go to um, our six. So there's a six, a 10, and a 12, all right? So we're gonna turn back around and get our blues. Remind you yourself with your worksheet, okay? So you can see what I'm working on here and we are going to just remember those little strokes, okay? Now, I'm gonna grab all blue. Remember what I said when you've got small brushes? You grab all blue, really load that brush, and then all you have to do, whether you be in your palette or a foam plate, um, foam or paper plate, is you're gonna pull a little bit of white, all right? So this is side loading. Okay, so I'm gonna come a little bit, a little bit, a little bit more white, all right? The blue and a little bit of white. All right, so all these little guys at the top are gonna kinda look like that. And I have a little bit more green showing than I did before on my first project, but I kinda like that where it's showing. Now I'm gonna keep picking up. Now let's do some little blossoms. So we have a little teeny blossom here. All right, so this way, and think about it being on your stem and then a little bit this way. Now just think every one of those stems has some blossoms on it. And I'm doing wet on wet, so you'll see me going up and getting paint quite often. All right, so why I have this 
I'm going to move over and do my little bits of this blue with a small brush over here. So I'm pushing and pulling. Push, push. Okay. And like I said, it's okay to see the stems where it's coming from. All right. Little strokes. Now, just remember while you're watching the video, you can stop it and then come back again when you're called up. I like that part. All right. So now I got a little fuller on that. So let's get a little bit more sparse on this one over here. And I can turn it around and make them a little darker by having the blue, the white leading it, the white coming down. All right. And on this one, I did make some little strokes. See the difference when you uh, when you flip the way you're leading this. So if I turn it over and I put some white, yeah, I pick up white a lot. See that? All right. But I did start some dark up here first. All right. Now let's go ahead and finish these with the next step up. Now I can go all the way to 12. You got to figure out what's more comfortable for you. I'm going to do 10. So I'm going to load it all blue and side stroke the white. Now this is going to keep more paint in it for a little bit longer. And I do want to do this one first because I'm going to overlap this flower on top of it. All right. Now remember some of those blossoms that we were doing on the worksheet? If we look at those again, I had one here. Pick up white. And see, I've got multiple ridges there, so I need to blend right here that white into the blue. And look, then I can put a second layer on it and it actually shows. Little layers. We go right on top of our leaves. Now I did put some little light green blossoms in this flower a little bit later. All right, so I'm going to stop this one because this one's going to come on top of it. But I really want to see the difference of this one coming on top of it. So I can leave this all darker right in here. All right. You see that? Now I'm going to continue to pick up the white and as I go down here, watch what happens. I can make this a little bit lighter flower cluster. So I went up, put a few of these strokes to finish. You got to finish some of the blossoms like I was teaching you on the worksheet. Like here's a blossom. It's going to stroke right over here. See this blossom there and this one? So I need a little bit more blue this time. Then I can stroke here and chisel, chisel. Okay, so now, just like I was showing you, I solid made those a little bit more solid. So look what happens when I come in here. So Then I can stroke a few little strokes in. And it gives you the illusion of a little flower. Now what I can do also, I'll show you on this other one, where I float some color. 
to intensify and separate the blossoms. All right, so if you have the right color, you can usually make it look really good right there. Or I'm gonna show you how easy it is to come in here. So let's leave that for a minute. I'm gonna take the 12 and get some floating medium. And I could even pick up a little bit of that Prussian blue. Can you see that? Or I'm gonna float it. Now look what happens. I could come right in here and go like this and bring this up away from that blossom there. And I can also wipe that off if I feel like, oh, I did too much and push it back over. See, I can move it over a little bit. So it's just on the outside edge of some of this. Okay, see the difference? And same thing over here. This one's on top. So you're just floating it. If you don't like it, you take a wet paper towel and take it all off. Okay, and that's the same thing where I put pinks and all over here. All right. So that kind of fun? It's just a little trick that we use. And if you, it's not a trick, it's a tip. All right, or I could take it all off, which I'm going to because this is already printed and we want to leave it like it was. Anyway, that's the fun that you can do here. Now, I still got a little full on here. So your, your struggle will be less is better. Have you ever felt that way? Especially if you're painting and, and I would get bigger and bigger and bigger. And so I was big, bold, and bright. <laughs> so I could tell as I was getting better because I could control my strokes a little better. And so I want you to see on these, let's do a little bit less flowers on this one. All right, because you see I'm very full. This one's not so much, but the middle one I am. All right. Little teeny buds. So just think of going around. We didn't do all the single petals like I did on the worksheet for the full looking blossom. But we're going for the illusion. A little bit here, a little bit there. Okay. <clears throat> and then I'm going to fill in just little bits of green leaves, which will make that fluffier and a few little stems. All right. But let's go over here and address these little guys. Now let's see if I can do less, 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 <laughs> so you can see. I've got a little bit here, a little bit there, and I can go back down to my small brush, or I can stay up on the chisel. There's your chisel. Stay up on the chisel and don't push very much. All right? <clears throat> so I'm gonna come right here and put some little light colors. And same thing over here, just a little bit. This one's on top. All right. Now, a little bit more of a blossom. And, and this, you'll see that I put the green leaves in between a few stems, okay? So, see how much lighter I'm doing this? A lot less. All right. So, after you get comfortable, it's all about stroke, stroke, stroke. Here we go. I think maybe we'll make one that really looks like one down there lower, because these are a little bit closer to you, right? All right, we're gonna finish up right here by putting stronger white. And then every once in a while, structure more of a blossom, okay? And every once in a while, you can pick up some Prussian blue. Especially as we get down here near the bottom of this last one on top. There we go. All right. So 
a little bit bigger blossoms, you can come in there, or open blossoms, you can come in there and put some dark back in there. All right. Okay, now what I like to do is have fun with the little stuff. All right. Little pretty. Get the paint out of the brush because what's the only thing that will wreck your chisel is if you let paint dry in the ferrule right there. And so you'll hear me raking. That's a good thing. Okay, so we clean it out so it doesn't stay in there. Now, I'm going to use um, the six, but you can use the two also and do some of these little leaves. So I'm going to turn my green back around and I can pick up the white and bring it over here so I have it ready to go. Now, what did I tell you again? I can take and start with all dark green on this and then side load a little bit of light green. Little brushes. You can fit the little brushes and split them in between this ridge, but when I usually do it all one color and add the second, then that's not gonna really help you much. All right, so I, you notice that I am taking and flattening that, and see it's still got too much, so I can pat it there pick up a little bit more. So get a nice nice mixture and then keep working from that, all right? So I'm gonna push and lift, push and lift. All right, now I want you to think about these, they're flowing out of the vase, all right? So I want some more out here. So I'd like the triangle and then I can throw a couple more in here. So I might even put a dark green one there. And then I'm going to pull my stem into my leaves, all right? So let's take some down on the vase. And that's going to help it look a little bit more solid in here. All right. And go ahead and pull your stem while you're doing it. I think mostly because I don't want you to forget, okay? All right, so now let's come in here and I'm going to throw a few of these little guys. Now remember I said it's on the chisel. You're lifting the front edge so that you can put a few thin little guys coming out of there. You really have to have fresh paint for that to work. All right just here and there. And then to make this look like it's got little, little green in here, I'm gonna go over there and get a little bit of white and put a few little leaves here and there popping through the blossoms. All right, but don't get carried away. We don't need a lot. Okay, see, just a little bit, not too much. And in fact, I came here. I could also get my liner with some water. And remember what I said with the liner, you want to make it inky. Now, I don't really want this liner to be dark, so I can add some of that, that um, light green in there and try not to mess of, <laughs> I'd like to keep the sacred clean that out of there so it's ready and make this inky. Never use the medium to make it inky. All right, so look, I'm just gonna make little thin lines coming, because this is closer to you and they're just little stems coming out of here. But I will take and, where did I put that little one? I can even take a, the two like I was telling you before on this little one and stroke little leaves coming out. Okay, so now we're gonna do our dragonfly. There we go. All right, I also at this point can use some white or some light green to get a little bit more shading on the cut there. All right, a little bit in here. Okay, 
So just enjoy the little brush because look what you can do. Even smaller than the six, you can come in here with a few of these little guys. I definitely will use this small brush to do the dragonfly body. All right. And let's use our 10. Now, if you're uncomfortable, you can take and draw the body on here and figure out where it's going to be to make sure you're going to like the position. All right. So I can't see that very well, but I don't want to do the pencil. So you can get color chalk too, but I can at least see where I want it to be. Now remember, these are the colors I used. I had a little bit of that Prussian blue uh, and some uh, some uh, sap green, all right? And then I touched the white, so it gave me that mixture. And I've done them all sorts of colors. I've even put a metallic on here. All right, so we need to get that brighter, just a little bit brighter. All right, but I want it see-through still, right? All right, so let's turn it so I feel comfortable doing the wings, all right? So I know that the head and the body is going to be right there. So as I come here, remember what I did? I came down and then I laid it a little bit. So if you get the shape, then it's easy to fill in, all right? And sometimes I use enough floating medium that it's totally see-through. Now it's easier to, ga to gauge the next one. And you want to try to make sure that they're about the same. All right. So see how I made that double little dip there? All right. So see, I can make that a little bit more to match the other side. And then... I'll put a teeny bit of medium so I can make that work. All right, so then I'm going to come right in here and do the second wing. I usually don't do them pointed, but I thought that worked. All right, so we're now going to come in here and do a little bit of a body. So here's the head. So look, side to side. I could do another one side to side. And then I like to start the dragonfly down here and push. And then get skinny as I come up. All right. And you can even take a little bit of white or darker. Now, I hope you enjoyed this. These little accents that you add, see how I add a little bit of dark green? These little accents make your whole piece turn different, okay? So see the dragonfly filled uh, void there, which I liked. And I'd like you to sign your pieces. So remember what I do. I use the script liner, get it inky, roll that brush. I usually do this on a plate, but this works. Roll the brush, and then I'm gonna sign my signature. I usually do it over in a corner. I also just realized that I didn't float that edge, and I can probably show you that real quick, where I'm taking the, uh, let's get the 12, and that'll work for us, and then we can intensify just a little bit with that floating medium and the color that we had before. All right, so medium, and little pinks, the little bright greens, so look, and I didn't want it to be too wimpy, I really wanted that shade to show. Citrus green, see? And I, I can then come up this edge. And remember what I love about the medium, if I think I overdid it, I can take and wipe that off really quick and just do it again. I also, I made my table a little bit bigger than the original, but that's okay. Magenta makes my pink, okay. So I did come in here and go around here a little bit. Okay, and then take that color out just a little bit. I picked up a little bit of blue. I didn't mean to do that. All right, so. Just a touch of it. You could speckle like we taught you last spot. 
a little bit if you want to. All right, and the same thing down here. I got a little bit of that Prussian blue with some green, with the citrus green, and I just came under, under this glass. This is real good for you to see. Turn it like this so you can float right under the glass with medium. <laughs> I had rubbed off all the medium. There we go. See that? And then go back and forth just for some shading. See that? And I can come in there and tap it. Okay, now I am excited for y'all to show me pictures and show me what you turn yours into and how fun it is to create together on Let's Paint. Okay, so we learned quite a few things in this class, talking about the backgrounds with a little sponge to get the colors, doing the vase, and it actually looks like it was a vase with stems inside. So I wanted to share with you what I love about the multi-surface paint the most is that we can put it on multiple surfaces. So exactly what the name says, folk art multi-surface means you can put it on glass, ceramic, mirrors, look at this wood piece and the metal. Metal's how I started painting and look, you just paint it so easily on metal and you're gonna love that, I promise you. I also want to ask you to share your painting and to share it I want you to go to our Facebook group which is Let's Paint with Plaid and on there you're going to put your pictures if you're willing to share because I would love to see it and you will also see other paintings of One Stroke that we have done for the Flowers of the Month where they're already sharing and you're going to love seeing that. I'd like to also invite you to the Plaid's, uh, Plaid site which is Plaid Online dot com forward slash less paint where you're going to see everything that's in the know about less paint lessons and who's coming up next and little tips and tricks and more one stroke so i bet i can tease you about something you probably want to know about what's coming up next month with our flowers of the month you think so we're going to be doing august and august look how fun that is is the gladiola and I had such a good time figuring out this project and getting it ready for you. So I wanna see you next month so we can paint together. Let's paint.